Hello and welcome to this Photoshop video. If you're watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that notification bell, then you'll know whenever I put up new content. Looking back at images we may have shot many years ago to see if we can spot something today that maybe we didn't see at the time is a worthwhile thing to do. I always seem to find something every time I do this. A couple of days ago I stumbled across a few thumbnails of this aircraft. It's a Hawker Hurricane. I think it's quite a rare one because it's attached to the Royal Navy or it was. You can see it's got an arrestor hook under the fuselage so I guess it's pretty rare. I shot this around 2006 at the Bedford Steam Fair in Biggleswade within the United Kingdom. Now I couldn't get a full shot of the aircraft at the time. Had I been able to, I feel sure one of them would have been amongst the group of thumbnails that I was looking at, and there wasn't one. So looking at the images now, I started to think about making a joiner picture. Now as you can see by the image I've just placed on screen, this was the sort of thing that I had in my mind as I was looking at the pictures of the Hawker Hurricane. I shot this many years ago and I think for the same reasons I created a joiner picture because I couldn't capture the whole bomber in one go. This in fact is the Memphis Bell B-17. Now while I was looking at these three pictures and thinking about making a joiner picture I'm not entirely sure why this thought came to me but I wondered what Photoshop would do if I tried to stitch all three of those thumbnails together. Because if you look at all three in their entirety, they don't contain the whole aircraft. Well, let me show you what it did. I selected all three of those thumbnails from within Photoshop's bridge and opened up all three into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to select all three from the left hand side and just above those thumbnails I'm going to go to the drop down option and choose to merge these into a panorama. And although I've got some sky missing and some grass missing and I've got a problem with the wheel I was amazed at what Photoshop was able to do. Remember these shots were taken in 2006 and I didn't have a single thought in my head at the time of shooting to ever amalgamate all three of those thumbnails together. Now as you can see by the spinning round of the screen I aborted that stitch into a panorama and I brought you back into Photoshop's bridge because I thought if it did such a good job with this image, this image and this image did I have one other that had the front wheel in place. And I found this one. And you'll be amazed exactly what it did. So I'm going to select all four of these, hit the Enter key and open them up into Adobe Camera Raw. Once the thumbnails are open in Adobe Camera Raw using the Control key I'm going to select all four of them and then use the same option as before to merge them into a panorama. Now I've been a Photoshop user for something like 25 years, may even be a little more, but I was astounded by what it did with these four unrelated images. When I say unrelated, I don't mean in content, I mean that there was no intention at the time they were shot to ever do a stitch. Now that gives me the opportunity to do some repairs here and maybe produce a pretty good shot of this aircraft. I'm not going to make any changes here. I'm going to click Merge. We're given a name we can save it by. We can change it of course, but that's okay for me. And we'll see another thumbnail appear at the bottom of the stack, which is all four of those thumbnails above stitched together. Now remember, once we've got to this stage, we can always close down Adobe Camera Raw and just open this up at any stage in the future and continue our work. 
With the spinning round of the screen, you can see I did choose to close down those other four thumbnails. I'm not entirely sure if they do put a drain on my computer while I'm trying to work through this particular stitch, but I've closed them down anyway. I'm going to make a start with my lens corrections from the center top of the icons above my cursor. So let's select them first. I've had a good look at the image close up and I can't find very much chromatic aberration. But I'm going to tick the box to fix any that I may have missed. There can't be much as I'd have found some, but let's tick the box because 99 times out of 100 it does a superb job. The other one is to enable the profile corrections. I'm going to tick that. You'll see the image pop just a little bit, change, while the software identifies the lens that I use to shoot the image, it knows what the distortion is within that lens and it applies a fix. Let's go back to the basic tab and think about what we may want to do next. Now we've got a few repairs to do here, but that's all part of the fun. We've got to replace the grass. We've got to replace the sky. That's going to mean we've got to replace the aerial because we physically don't have that running from the tail to the little mast there. We've got two feet just below the rear wheel of the aircraft and I'm afraid they've got to go and someone just sticking out around the rear of the plane there we'd have to take them out too. But I think that's all easily doable. The next thing I generally look at is color balance and I usually turn to the eyedropper tool, the white balance tool way up at the top left. So let me select that. And I did click around the image in various places. What I'm looking for is something which is not pure white, but I would expect it to be a neutral color. Now there's tone in the white on the tail there. If we click, and I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that because if you look over on the right hand side at the temperature and the tint control you can see as I click it does move that bottom slider just a little bit to the right and it's not making a massive difference to the color but I think it's an important difference which I'm willing to accept. I always think of these two sliders as this one being corrective and perhaps this one being a bit more creative. For example, I could just make a mental note of the 4.9, but if I wanted to just warm my image a little bit, I could do that by just cranking that to the right, and if I felt I was happy with that, I could stop at that point. Now the next job is to deal with the dust marks in the sky. We can see one at the top right and one above the fuselage, but there's actually a few more than that. I'm going to pick up the brush. I'm going to pick up my spot removal tool. You can see the size of the brush there. I can adjust that using the square bracket keys on the keyboard, and I can click over the dust, and it will fix them pretty well for me. But of course I said there's more dust marks here than you can currently see because the sky is light. But if I darken the sky, they're sure to show. So I'm going to go down to the visualize spots down at the bottom right. I'm also going to zoom in. And now you can see some of the problems I've got to fix. I can make my brush a little bigger. And I'm going to take just a few moments and fix all of the dust spots that I can see in the sky. And as you can see, there's quite a number, but they're only going to take a minute or two. So no great problem there. There's another one there and another one there. What you can do at any stage is touch the V key if you like, and you can lose the bounding box. Now, as I come to the end of dealing with these dust spots, and it is a good idea that we're pretty thorough here because at some stage we're going to have to clone some of the detail from the sky and the grass to repair the areas we don't have. So we don't want to take our repair from a place where dust marks are still present. I also don't worry too much about these. Yes, they take a couple of minutes to fix, but I can remember back in my darkroom days where just one dust spot on a black and white print could take you anything up to 20 minutes to fix. So I'm pretty okay 
with having to spend a couple of minutes to fix dust spots here. It's an occupational hazard for the other freedoms we have dealing with our raw files. Control zero will fit the image back on screen if I untick my visualize spots. I'll also touch the H key which will take me back to the basic tab. I've got the sky fixed because I want to darken it next. Now to do that I'm going to think about a bit of highlights reduction. Maybe a little bit of exposure but of course I don't want to darken the plane too much. Maybe I'll investigate a bit of clarity, just a touch, but I don't think I need any further colour. But I would like a little bit more density in the sky and I wonder if I can achieve that with a graduated filter. Let's give it a try. Go up to the graduated filter. I'm going to click and drag. You can see I'm dragging down a little bit of an angle to match the angle of the fuselage. Maybe I'll just drop the exposure down a little bit. Maybe a little bit of the blue. Tidy up the sky. A bit more perhaps. But I don't really want to go too much further. I've got a bit of lightness over on the right hand side up here. But I may deal with that in Photoshop a little bit later on. But we could add a second graduated filter there and deal with that here. But I'm looking around the image. I think the only thing I'd like to do is maybe just lighten the shadows a little bit on this cart here. It looks a little bit solid. I think I've got to be a bit careful. But here's a technique which I often use myself. I'm going to begin by suggesting, OK, we're more or less there at the moment. So I'm going to open this up into Photoshop. Now as soon as the picture does open up, I don't think it would be a bad idea to save this as a Photoshop file to retain the smart object status, which is what I have here, and the work we've done so far. Now I've already done that, calling this Hurricane 001. I'm going to go to the right of that thumbnail, right click, and make a new smart object via a copy. What that does is it enables me to open up either one of these smart objects back into Camera Raw and I can adjust them independently to each other. I want to open up the top one and I want to zoom in to that cart down there because what I want to try to do is something on the shadows. I want to lift them a bit but I've got a sneaking suspicion we're going to make the noise infinitely worse. Now if you look really carefully into the shadows there you can already see there's a hint of noise in the tire wall and elsewhere and I haven't even changed the sliders just yet. Let me do that by just increasing that shadow slider just to raise that up a bit. Maybe a bit of exposure. Don't have to worry about what changes I'm making to the rest of the image. It's just this part that I'm interested in. Now let's take a look into the detail section which is up on the left hand side of these icons and I'm going to push up the luminance a little bit to smooth out the noise just a touch. But Then I'm going to investigate moving these sliders to try to improve the result you can see on screen. There's a color slider here. If I take that to the extreme left you can see it doesn't make any difference at all, makes it marginally worse. Let's take it to the extreme right. And now we can see some of that colour has been removed. So I'm happy to live with that. Colour detail. Well, move it to the left. I want less detail. Is that going to help me? When I do that, it doesn't seem to do a great deal. So what if I take it to the extreme right? Doesn't seem to do a great deal either. So let's reset that one. Double click. Colour smoothness. Let's take that to the right. And if we give just a couple of seconds for it to do its work, I think you'll agree that there's no evidence now of any colour noise there. So I've probably squeezed as much out of this particular piece of the image as I possibly can. So let's click OK and open that back up into Photoshop. Once it does its work, what we're going to do is put a reverse mask 
on that layer. What's a reverse mask? Well, generally speaking, when we apply a mask, it's white. But if I hold my Alt key and click the mask icon down the bottom, the mask is created black. So what the mask is doing now is masking away all the changes I've just put into that card. But that's a good thing, because with the mask selected, I can now just paint white just in the area I want to raise the tones. So once again, if we zoom into that card, we can get it a fair size on screen. I can go to my toolbox and select white as my foreground color. I'm going to pick up my brush. My brush is very small at the moment. That's why you can just see the tiny crosshairs there. So I'm going to use the square bracket keys to increase the size of the brush. Then a quick look up at the opacity and flow. The opacity is 100%. I'm happy with that. The flow is 10%. I'm happy with that too. So now I need to just paint around this area and raise the tones a little bit in those shadows to the degree that I want them. We don't have to do a great deal of work here. We're not trying to make it easy to spot every single detail. We're just lifting the shadows a little bit. Remember when we manipulate our images, generally speaking, it's a series of small tweaks. Each one of them is not significant on their own. It's only when you add them all up that they become important. Control zero will fit the image on screen. And there you can see we've got just a little more interest there. Small, but worth having. Now I've just saved the two layers I have on the right hand side so I'm happy now to go to the top right of the layers window and choose merge visible. I'm also going to pick up my crop tool because over on the right hand side rather than repair over there I think the easiest option is to just come in a little bit with a crop. Do I need to come up at the base? I think we could come up a little bit at the base something like that. You can see now the rule of thirds is nicely on that horizon line over there. That's not too bad. And I'll leave the sky as is and we'll repair it from here on in. In fact, maybe I'll just tweak the back end just to there, make our life just a tiny bit easier. And hit the tick to commit that crop. Now we need to think about doing some of these repairs in the grass and in the sky. Now to make those repairs we're going to use Content Aware Fill. To start off with I'm going to zoom in to that area at the bottom so we've got it fairly large on screen. And I'm going to select my polygonal lasso tool from the toolbox. And I'm going to make quite a tight selection along here. But it's quick and easy as you can see. When I say tight, I mean close to the edge, not one of those selections that you need to make pinpoint accurate. What we're going to do next then is to go above to the Edit menu, and we're going to use Content Aware Fill. The window that opens up gives us the result on the right-hand side, and it gives us where the repair is being taken from on the left-hand side. If I go to the left hand side and select my zoom, I can choose to zoom out a little bit because we may want to choose where the repairs are coming from. Let me pick up my brush from the options there. You can see it's got a little minus there because if I'm going to repair the grass, I don't really want to be pulling any detail from the aircraft and certainly not the wheel and probably not that shadow either. So do a little bit of work, give it a few moments just to correct and see the sort of result it gives you. And you can keep doing this and take away the shadow there maybe and see the result there. Each time it's going to take just a few seconds to do. There's a little bit round the back we can probably take away. Now that's not a bad repair, but I think we can possibly just touch that up ourselves. Let me move this image over a bit just in case it is a little bit of this shadow here that's affecting us. And I think we can possibly 
take away anything that we don't want it to. That was my error there. Let me just put that back into position. You see, we don't want it to be taking anything from the areas where they're completely wrong. Give it a few minutes, you can see a little circular thing going around at the bottom right. We'll give it a chance to do its work. Well, I think we can work happily with that. So what I'm going to do here is click OK to open that back up in Photoshop. You'll notice that it puts the repair on a new layer. So if I hit Control D, now we can leave it for a moment or zoom in and repair it straight away. What do we need to do? There's a couple of areas there which I think we may notice, but we can always put a bit of shading on there. We certainly haven't got a bad result. A little mark down there. So I think what I may do from this point is to save this as Hurricane 3, and then I'll merge those two layers together and continue with the sky. Well, as you can see by the spinning round of the screen, and if you look over on the left-hand side, I've dealt with the sky exactly the same as we did with the grass. I've drawn a selection around the edge in exactly the same way, and this is the result we have without me making any changes at all. I'm going to accept that. Click OK and open this back up into Photoshop. I'll save my image once again, and then I'll flatten the two layers together so we can then do any tidying up we need to do in the grass and maybe a little in the sky. As the image appears on screen, I've speeded things up just a little bit. I've done a little bit of cloning down at the bottom left corner. Simple stuff just to smooth out the work we did previously. The sky doesn't need any extra work. It's been filled in with content aware fill pretty well. The next thing we need to look at is that aerial from the tail towards the cockpit. Most of it's in place and we need to replace just a part of it. So let me select my zoom tool and I'll zoom in to the area we need to work on. Actually we've got a little bit of a dip there as well. Maybe I'll have a go at taking all of that out. To do that we could work on a new blank layer. Never a bad idea to do this. Go down to your layers Add a new blank layer over and above the image thumbnail on the right hand side. And then select your spot healing brush. From the options at the top of the screen, make sure you've got sample all layers ticked. Then I'm going to reduce the size of my tool using the square bracket keys till I've got something which just about covers it. I'm going to click at that end and I'll Hold the shift key and click at that little crooked piece. That didn't work bad. Now we'll do the entire section. Holding the shift key. You can see what happens when we do that. It paints between those two points. And as you can see, that's done a pretty good job. I'll do the same thing here. Click. And hold the shift key and click. Now we need to replace that aerial. Now we can repair the aerial on another new blank layer. As long as we're happy with the repair we've done with the old aerial, then I think it's safe to merge these two layers together from the top right of the layers palette. And then straight down to the bottom right, I'll add a new blank layer. What we want over on the left hand side is black as our foreground colour. We need to pick up our soft edge brush, just a very small one. I want my opacity at 100% and my flow at 100%. I also need to zoom in because I need to see this area and this area. So we'll drag across there. That's looking just about perfect. All we need to do now is one or two tests to get the right thickness of the line. So if I click, hold the shift key and click again, we can clearly see that doesn't match the line over here. So we can drop the size of this brush down. I'm going to drop it down to about four. Click. 
that doesn't look too bad let's take it down just a little more let's go down to two I think we'll get away with that nicely as you can see it matches pretty well here maybe it's a little bit darker but I don't think it's going to affect us greatly at all now you can either drop this in the bin and create a new blank layer or you can use Control Z to undo those previous little tests I'll just drag it down into the bin and recreate it because now I know what I'm doing I need to carefully click right on that point hold the shift key move to the right and click again and there we have the aerial fixed now you can always save the image giving it a different name and live with it for a little while before committing but I'm pretty confident that the area I've put back in there is going to be acceptable so I'm going to go back to the top right and merge those layers once again the next thing I'm going to tackle is the guy that's right at the end of the tail now I think to do that I'm going to zoom in quite large and I think all we need to do here is protect the edge of the aircraft with a simple selection it really will be a simple selection it's only going to take a minute or two to draw because we need to just protect the edge I suppose it's a little bit like putting down a bit of masking tape before we use uh, a paintbrush or a spray can so I'm going to go to my polygonal lasso tool from the toolbox and I'm going to carefully make a selection around this point and you can see we can click, 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 click. Well, I think you get the idea. It'll speed up as we go down this long section. Once you get down that far, you can touch the space bar, click and drag. And we can move down to the bottom. But to be honest, I think we're more or less there already. Now I'm going to go round the guy and up and we'll go back to that point all we need to do now is to give this edge a slight softness just to mimic the edge we can see here probably one pixel is going to be enough so select a mask will do that I'll drop my feather radius down to one pixel and there you can see it matches pretty well the output I'm going to give this is to a selection of course I'm going to zoom out just for a moment because what we've done is just isolated that spot so we can do cloning or we could use the healing brush within that selection but not outside so we're pretty safe so if we zoom back in so we can see it all I'm going to pick up the old-fashioned clone tool I think it's going to work a treat here select that and I may even hide that selection control H will do that still there and it's still working square bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush I'm going to clone from that point and I'm going to move to the right and I can just paint down now I'm looking up above at the flow because I notice I'm not painting in a solid way and I can see my flow is set to 20% I'm going to touch the zero key to make it at 100% and I'm just going to paint down this area you can see it's not difficult to do at all once we've got that little bit of protection I may have to change my clone source if I want to take away the shadow of the guy and it's quite important to do these things any other little touches and one little section right in there control zero didn't take too long not forgetting we've got a hidden selection there so hit control D to remove it we can do exactly the same for the feet which are sticking out the bottom of the aircraft by the rear wheel well there you can see the selection I made there's a couple of little points up here which I think I could do with retouching I'll hit control D to remove the selection the trick with the clone tool is not to clone too much from one source and when you do you get a little repeated pattern like you can see here 
So to get rid of that, just change the clone source point and just tap around here and there and you'll soon tidy that up and make it look completely natural. Control zero will fit the image on screen. Now I do want to darken the right hand side down just a little bit. And I think what I may do is just pick up my burn tool and see if I can achieve what I want with that. So going over to the toolbox, I'm going to select burn, going to select highlights. I've got an exposure of 1%. That's probably not going to be enough. I think I'll bring that up to about five or six. That'll do. I'm going to pick a nice big brush and I think I'll drop the size of my image down just a little bit so I can just sweep in from that right hand side one sweep at a time. It's making a change but it's not very quick. I'm going to increase the exposure to 10% by touching the number one key on the keyboard. Now you can see it's moving maybe a little too fast. Control Z, Control Z. So anytime that happens, just adjust that exposure. So if five seemed a bit light and 10 is too much, well, we'll go to zero seven. Or we can just be a bit more patient with five. I just want to drop that down a little bit. Just so it's not quite so bright on that right hand side. We're all gonna choose something slightly different as I say many times. Apart from that, I think we're more or less done. Unless you wanted to do a little bit more gardening with little spots around the grass, but I think we more or less have it. Well, as you can see here, I have opened up the image size just to give you an idea of the size of this image at 300 pixels per inch, which would print very effectively. I could quite easily get a 38, 39 inch print on the long side. In fact, I could get considerably more than that. So stitching those four images together was wholly worthwhile. But I'm still impressed with how Photoshop took four images that were shot in 2006 with no intention at all of being stitched together and look at the job. It's done. Here we can take a look at the end result. If you want to display your images full screen like this within Photoshop, just scroll through the F key. And what I mean by scroll is touch it two or three times and you'll reach this particular screen. Touch it again and you'll go back to where you were working from. I think the important thing with these techniques is to remember they're not unique to this particular image and this aircraft they're pretty much usable across the board. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.